Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. Today we're going to look at underrated game engines. This is not to say that these are better than other game engines, but these are game engines that get a little bit less noticed than the big ones. Now let's start off with the big ones, so you know the ones that we're not going to mention in this video. And again, this is not a topic about, uh, you know, what is better or what I recommend. It's just so that kind of bring a little bit of exposure to game engines you may not know about. So everybody's heard of Unity at this point in time. Unity is the most popular game engine out there uh, for making a 3D and 2D games, so obviously that is not going to be on this list. Nor, of course, is Unreal Engine. Now, Unreal Engine, not quite as popular in the 2D world, but when it comes to 3D, Unreal has a ton of momentum, a ton of AAA games were made with it, a ton of indie games made with it. Uh, Unreal Engine is kind of killing it on all four cylinders right now. And then, of course, from the uh, open source world, we have the Godot Game Engine. Those are probably the big three in the world of game engines. There's a couple of other ones on like the cusp, uh, things like Stride or O3DE, which, spoiler alert, we're not talking about today either. There's also a couple of very predominant 2D game engines out there that we're not talking about today either. First off, there is Game Maker. Game Maker is um, an excellent engine. It is now owned by Opera. Uh, it has a lot more resources than it did. There is a free version out there, and it's been around for 15 years. You probably already know about Game Maker. And the probably number one alternative to Game Maker, especially if you want to stay away from like coding, uh, you still code, but you use like a spreadsheet approach to things, and that is Construct 3. Those would be kind of some of the the most predominantly or well-known game engines, I'd say, and we're not going to talk about those today. So what we're going to talk about is two game engines that I think are ideal for beginners, two 2D game engines, and three 3D game engines. Without further ado, let's look at one of the beginner recommendations. Now, I'm not going to lie, it's very weird throwing Microsoft into like an underrated or underdog kind of list, but this one, I don't think enough people know about it, and this is honestly my number one recommendation if you want to learn how to do game development or you want to get someone involved, especially someone a little bit on the younger side or more visually oriented, and something called Make Code Arcade. We'll go ahead and see it in action right now. You can see it uses this uh, visual programming style. You've got this little preview of your game over here. You can see it and run it in uh, at real time. Uh, you do have a number of different assets available for you to actually start with. There's a ton of learning materials out there. And the coolest thing here is though it uses this visual block style programming language you can see here. So you're just everything here. This is on start. You do these different tasks. If it fits together, it works. So you see here on game update. So every pass through your game loop, you do this stuff. So it teaches you things like what a game loop is, the lifestyle of a game, and then programming aspects. Where it's really cool though is you can actually move on at any time and move from blocks to either JavaScript or Python programming. So if you want to get into coding, here you can see those blocks translated over into JavaScript, or here you can see them in Python. So if you want to learn, you know, without coding, coding, you can, but if you want to transition over and start to code, you can also do that as well. Uh, now, it is for making small, simple games 100% only. It, there are a number of devices you can run them on, or you can run them on this virtual devices here, but it's the kind of thing that you can sit down in a weekend, spit out some really fun games, and actually learn a lot. It's a great way to get someone that wants to learn game development into game development. In the same vein, another very friendly to beginners option out there is called Micro Studio. Now, this is completely online, so you work directly in your browser. I know that's a turn on or turn off for some people. Uh, it is completely free, however. This one uses its own custom programming language. So there's no visual language here. It's using something called MicroScript, which basically is a version of Lua. Now, the nice thing with this, and the reason, again, why I recommend it, is if you want to, you can also code in JavaScript, Python, or Lua, which are all more common mainstream languages languages. So again, you have that nice transitional path from the beginner friendly approach to more of a, a learn something applicable outside of this engine approach, but it's still going to teach you the basics of game development. Now what this tool has that's really nice is all of the stuff you need is integrated in. So you've got uh, editors in there, you've got so sprite editors, map editors, and so on. Uh, you can run it in a number of different environments, you can work with other people on it, and then you can export your game out for HTML, Windows, Linux, or Mac OS, and they're going to make other export options coming soon. So you can see the process right here. Let's open up this guy and you get an idea of how it works. So here you're getting a code editor over here. Uh, various different things there. You do have all of your tools for putting your world together. You have map editing tools here like this, literally drag and drop into the world to create your maps. You have all your sound available over here. You've got music. Again, there's a lot of stuff available from their community stuff. It is all documented. So if you want to learn how things work, and again, the nice thing is you can switch your code out between MicroScript and other scripting languages. So if you're looking for a beginner based programming language environment that has a bit of a runway to more, you know, 
mainstream languages, this is an option for you. And of course, you can test and run your games, check them out in action right here as well. And there you see an example game with very loud volume. So that is Micro Studio. Those are my two picks for absolute beginners. If you're looking to just get into coding, uh, there's not a really big time investment in either one of these tools. So they're great introductions. You learn what you want and you move on or you just have a lot of fun and you go from there. So now we're gonna move on to the 2D game engines I recommend. Uh, the first one is Default. Now I've talked about Default a number of times on my um, channel in the past. I did a tutorial series on it. I don't think enough people know about Defold. Defold is production ready. This was actually originally created by King. Yeah, that King. Uh, and then they made it completely free. It's semi open source. Uh, it has a full level editor, um, scene editor. It uses the Lua programming language and the messaging type system. Now it may not be for everybody. The way that you work in the coding here for the Defold game engine is a little bit different than many other game engines. And that might turn some people off. You use kind of like a message pass system but once you've made sense of it it works so well and the nice thing is it's a mostly open source project that now actually has uh, PlayStation support Nintendo switch support and Xbox coming soon as well as you can see all kinds of other platforms so if you're looking to create a 2d game and for some reason you know um, the ones we listed earlier on Godot or unity or game maker or whatever just don't work for you the default game engine is a definite one to check out it's got a lot of features it has been production you know tested it's being used uh, for making a variety of commercial games and again it's got almost all of the tools you need built into it you've got literal kind of WYSIWYG style GUI editing tools in there as well you get physics full support for um, scripting and again the Lua language with a very different approach to it it is also very uh, tiny the executable that's created uh, as you can see right here and generally it is quite performant and once you've learned the basics of it you can pretty much extrapolate how everything else will work now i will acknowledge the fold is certainly not for everybody it's got a different philosophy and a different approach to how things work but it's a game engine that i have long loved and long trumpeted and i don't think it has quite the respect that it deserves so it's a little bit underrated or un unknown in the industry for the most part. And I highly recommend if you're interested, do check out Default. I would use it only for a 2D game. There is 3D functionality in there, but that 3D functionality is only for creating like two and a half D style games. So mixing 3D art with 2D art, that kind of stuff. And then another option we have here, and I don't know if I, I kind of argued if I should put this on this list or not, because I don't know if this is uh, again, underrated or underappreciated, or if it's actually kind of now as well known as the other engines I talked about earlier on. I've talked about this guy a number of times again on my channel, uh, and I'm a big fan of it because it's GDevelop. And the cool thing with GDevelop is they've actually recently released a version uh, for both Android and iOS. It's the exact same version. So you can develop completely locally on Windows, Linux, or Mac, or you can run it in the cloud, or you can actually run it on your mobile platforms. You use a visual style programming interface. Um, it is partially open open source. Uh, there is a ton of functionality. You can use this guy completely free. There are some pro tiers. Again, you can just check it out in your browser. Uh, it does use a, um, a visual programming language type approach as well. I would highly recommend checking out the Fold Game Engine if you haven't already. Again, I've covered this a few times in the past on my channel. All right, so now we're gonna move into the 3D realm and start things off with wickedengine.net. Now I've actually checked out Wicked Engine in the past as well. And as you can see from this website, it is, it's a hideous website. And this is probably part of why uh, Wicked Engine isn't as well known as it probably should be. Uh, it's, this guy just keeps adding amazing features and functionality to it. It is a completely free game engine. It's actually the game engine technology that powers the new Game Guru Max. It's got amazing rendering capabilities. More people should check out Wicked Engine. You're seeing some footage from my previous coverage of Wicked Engine, so you can get an idea of the graphical capability of this guy, but it has a ton of graphical features. It's pretty staggering what Wicked Engine is actually capable of doing, especially because this is pretty much a single developer's effort and yeah uh, the next one again is primarily a single developer's effort and I've covered it a couple of times in the past as well and this is a flax engine now flax is very much like a unity light there's two unity lights out there in my opinion there's cocos creator and flax and these guys if you've used unity you're going to be at 
comfort you're going to be you know comfortable in the flax engine for working with it and the feature set is pretty solid it's amazing uh, how much it's improved as it's gone on and one thing that people will find really interesting with the flax engine you actually have the option to do c plus plus scripting in addition to c sharp now this is primarily a one developer effort as well although he's got contributors now there's 40 or 50 contributors on this project and it impresses me how far this one has come now the the last one wicked engine is completely free and open source this one is uh, the source is available, so it's full source code available, but it's not technically open source. There is a price tag attached to this game engine, but that price tag is 4% uh, royalty after your first $250,000 per quarter. So for a lot of you guys, it's not going to really matter. And if you are actually going to have to pay that royalty, you're in a pretty good spot. If you've never checked out Flax Engine before, again, I've got a couple of videos on it on the en on um, the channel that I would highly recommend checking out. It is a very cool game engine. And then finally. Finally, we have the Felco engine. Now, this one has no right to be as good as it is. I've actually checked it in the past. It's this, who made this engine out there that, like, wh why is this a thing? Why is it free? Why does it keep getting all of these developments? And it's this really capable, pretty 3D game engine that I've actually, again, I've covered this guy in the past. I cover things, you know, big and small. So just because I covered it doesn't mean that it's hit the big time. I cover some pretty obscure stuff on this channel. But Felco Engine is one of those things that just doesn't make any sense because it is way, way better than it has any right to be. Uh, so it's one that I would highly recommend checking out if you're interested. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Those are a, a number of underrated game engines in my humble opinion. Again, doesn't mean that they're better than the alternatives. The, the, the big players, the, the people that we started this list off your your unities your unreal engines your godots your game makers and your constructs they are all big players because they work so you know there, there's no reason why you wouldn't want to go ahead and choose those but if for some reason none of those actually work for you i think some of the ones that we talked about today are definitely worth checking out especially if you are beginning uh this is my straight out recommendation if you've got someone that wants to learn game development especially someone a little bit on the younger edge uh start with something like uh make code arcade or with the Micro Studio, great recommendations there in my humble opinion. And I strongly recommend those over everything else we talked about today. Because you can start, you can learn with something like Make Code Arcade or um, with Micro Studio. And then, you know, use it for a weekend. Learn the basics of making games. And then move on to something like Godot or Game Maker or Unity or whatever. So that is my recommendations or at least some of my uh, underdog choices that are out there. Let me know what yours are in the comments down below. And hopefully I introduced at least one or two of you to something new. All right, that's it. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.